Hello again. This is Ben Hitchcock Cross talking to you today about uh, the Novak Witness and the director of the Division of Adult Institutions that is former director. Uh, she now works for the city of Milwaukee. Her name is Magda Fesahai. Um, <clears throat> she had been an attorney uh, working for the Department of Corrections in HR uh, for some time and then was all of a sudden promoted I mean, HR isn't really even on that track, but promoted uh, to senior management um, with li almost no experience of any kind. I mean, again, other than she had been an attorney working for HR uh, in a, not in a fairly high senior level position from what I could tell. Um, so I had interacted with her in a previous case uh, regarding... Um, let's say, accusations against kitchen employees in a um, DOC correctional institution in Green Bay. Um, so the basically, they had set up uh, female employees to fail, much like in the situation, the accusations against the female employee, uh, kitchen employee here, they called it the romance con. But basically, um, you know, if you're a female uh well, I'm going to put this a different way. Um, there is a un very unusual dynamic in prisons, uh, especially a very unusual psychosexual dynamic in prisons. And I've seen situations where um, sergeants who have come to me who uh, have been sexually assaulted by prisoners, not necessarily in uh, DOC, but very likely, um, and... Uh, they had every ability in the world to put this prisoner in solitary confinement, and yet they were sexually assaulted by the prisoner. Um, how is that possible? Well, it turns out that, um, you know, people have a lot of things in their background. So there very likely is uh, something in that employee's background and many of these employees' background um, that uh, – lead up to these kind of encounters with uh, prisoners, um, all sorts of ways. But that's the, ultimately, it's the romance con. The number one uh, factor, I would say, in that is uh, divorce is a very large factor in um, sort of, uh, we'll say, female, but also male employees falling victim to uh, what, again, what they call the romance con. This is uh, people who are trapped and have really no other means of uh, exercising any sort of agency here are using, uh, I guess, romance, for lack of a better word, to, um, you know, usually it's to get drugs. I mean, to be fair, um, to get someone. And once you have, um, you know, kissed or otherwise um, had sort of an interlude with a guard in one way or the other, the inmate or participated in some kind of criminal activity with the guard, the inmates got power over that guard because they can, um, you know, tell, rat out that guard, complain about that guard, uh, and cause an investigation to happen. And they've got, it really flips the tables there. So, um, that, uh, I, you know, I've represented people in that position, uh, all sorts of different ways. And I can tell you that the Department of Corrections, in my opinion, comes down uh, pretty hard on female employees who, um, you know, the assumption is that they have all the power in that situation. And I think that their understanding of psychosexual power is um, sort of medieval. But... On the other hand, they've got a lot to protect and there are people in, behind cages. So, um, yes. Anyways, uh, that is a little uh, digression down the road of uh, Magda Fesahai and the Department of Corrections. The, so we came into contact because the, they had clearly hid public records. Just no doubt about it. And that she, as an attorney, had seemed to me participated in uh, the hiding of public records. Um, we filed a suit on that that I think went nowhere ultimately because there was a district attorney involved. Um, but they, um, we certainly got on their radar uh, with that in that whole I issue. Um, so 
that is uh, my first sort of interaction with them. And again, the the key concept there was uh, there was other issues going on uh, at that uh, jail at the in Green Bay at that time. This is way back when my first interaction with her, and uh, we had requested records for them to try to to you know defend my client in some way or whatever the deal was. And uh, the records that they gave us were not. We asked records from them, and we asked records from the county, and the, we didn't get the same records, and it was problematic to say the least. So uh, that was that was her. So we uh, subpoenaed her uh, here. This is Miss Fesahai to appear at this hearing. She doesn't ever contact me to, to make arrangements. She contacts. Uh, Eric, uh, and, uh, the department of corrections and, uh, is decided to go on vacation to California during, uh, her testimony. So that's no problem for the judge. She just didn't show up at first and we had to like wrangle her. This is why Dittman is there. Um, that day happened to be my daughter's birthday. I happened to come home late for all that. And, uh, you know, well, you'll notice some uh, – there are some tense exchanges on this issue. Um, of course, the judge doesn't – sort of goes out of her way to make an excuse for why um, this government employee just got a subpoena, acknowledged that she got a subpoena and just decided to do whatever the heck she would go on vacation and do whatever she wanted. Now, again, if she had contacted me and said I'm on vacation that day, I would have been happy to, to get her on an earlier day. But did she – she contacted Eric and they didn't know what he told me. Didn't find out until we asked her about it under oath. So that's um, the problem there. Now, I will say that uh, this testimony, you know, I, I, I'm frequently accused of saying this is, you know, my greatest cross-examination ever. But I think at the time it was one of the most astounding testimonies that I've ever seen. And I think there's one phrase that sums it all up. Um, I think I asked her point blank all you know is that you didn't know anything before the escape. And she says, yeah. So um, that, I think, um, is Miss Fesahaya. We, of course, um, she's got some major problems with her answers, and uh, we don't get through her testimony um, largely because, again, she's on vacation. So we, uh, there's another whole series of testimony from her that we'll have to get to, and we're going to be with her for quite some time. So that'll be exciting um, and something to look forward to starting, I believe, on Monday here. Um, but that is uh, Miss uh, Magda Fesahayi, again, the former director of the Division of Adult Institutions, which that means, again, she's in charge of the 20,000-some males who are in uh, under the care of the Department of Corrections. So quite an astonishing amount of power. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about that. So um, stick with us. We'll keep you informed.